Smashments. We're going back to the glory days. I know. Never thought I'd say it. It's the edge of the Silver Age era of Dark Ascension, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very cool. So today we're going to go back. You know, I thought it was a good thing. It's almost Halloween. We're going the fourth quarter. 2020 is almost gone. And let's have some fun, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back, relax. Let's go down memory lane before there was 20 different variants. There weren't secret lairs. We just had creepy old guys that you kind of want to hide from. That's really about it. Look at that, folks. Dark Ascension. Does that bring back memories or what? This is a, a very interesting thing we can talk about today. Oh, no. 1X from Florida's seventh layer near the uh, cucumber salad. Crap. I apologize. I'll try to blur that out before the video goes live. This video is brought to you by my patron, John, also known as... Mr. Mulligan. Apparently, when he plays Magic the Gathering, all he does is just mulligan all day and just drive everybody crazy, and the game never actually starts. So that was kind of funny. Can't lose a tournament if the tournament never starts. So, let's have a great uh, time here. Let's uh, let's go down memory lane, and let's give you guys uh, my perspective on Dark Ascension. And boy, is it an interesting story. This is an interesting story, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start off by looking at some of the common cards. Oh my goodness. Looked like me when I was younger. Let's look at some of the cool artwork. Nice little horror and uh, very horror, evil, vampire, zombie, Halloween theme. I like it. I like it. Great time of the year. Thought it'd be a nice little... Uh, God, you gotta love the artwork, man. It'd be a nice little throwback for everybody heading into the end of the... Everyone's favorite 2020 year. Look at that guy. It's a little creepy. Ah, the old flip... Oh, that's right. I forgot. This is the... Uh, we got flip cards in the back. Where Rudy just pretty much gets hairier. That's really about it. Double rare pack right out of the gate. So let's start the video off by talking about what happened with Dark Ascension when the product actually came out. Let me explain a few things for you folks. Um, ugh, nice little Innistrad logo. So when this thing, I oh, thought that's a good common. When this thing actually came out, it did not do well. Remember, this was the era with Avacyn Restored and actual OG original Innistrad. Oh, lingering souls. Nothing like a good-looking ghost, but the neck, the, the kind of the, hold on, hold on, let's turn the neck. Wait, no, something's wrong with the neck. We need to, we need to figure that out. And, you know, this thing didn't do good when it came out, ladies and gentlemen. It was a, it was a rough time in magic. Increasing vengeance, the same creeper, and a foil common that turns into just pretty much Rudy at night. Um, a lot of people didn't realize this thing, like everybody looks back at these things, oh man, these boxes are almost $200 and this and that, and I was like, yeah, but you don't realize the bumpy road that it took to get here. I mean, while we look at these really cool... Are those, like, bodies hanging in the forest? That's kind of crazy. That chick's been screaming all day. Thought Scar again. And I swear I dated a girl like that. And, you know, it's just... It's such a... It's... We look back at it now with better, more fond memories than we did... Ooh. <laughs> the giant insect for our mythic number one, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't, there's no symbol in the corner, so this is not a flip card. Um, I don't remember that mythic ever being any good, though. I'll be honest with you all. And, uh, oh, we got our first foil. We got a common. And our very first foil here, they break the day. Very little foiling. You don't really see much going on with that foil. So that's the thing, is a lot of stores didn't do well with this. Remember, this was not a heavily printed product at all. It just, the market rejected it. The financial value from day one was just not strong. The market rejected the product. I mean, while I had a nice creepy Halloween-y theme and black cats and really cool stuff and equipment and creepy vampires and werewolves, just for everybody out there, Rudy is investing all in in Evolving Wilds. That's what we're supposed to do, right, folks? That's what I was told from other YouTubers that are I'm going to be working for next year. Geist, Flare, and the old Doomsayer. The end is near. Ah. So, pretty cool. And a foil uncommon that just pretty much turns into a hairier version of me. Yeah, so that's the biggest thing to take away. Uh, as of the filming of this video, everybody, a couple important facts. Uh, these boxes remain pretty cheap for the age of the 2012. Yeah, 2012. And these boxes remain pretty cheap. The fact you can get an 8-year-old magic box for under $200 is, in my opinion, is still very good. And look at this guy. But again, the financial value is weak. It was rejected years ago by the market, and it's still not very acceptable. Oh, look, actual Innistrad for us, the way they did the overlap there. And a foil, or not foil, I'm sorry, a common a flip card for the old human werewolf villager. I think it's a female werewolf, and a little less hairy than me, but you know, it's okay. It's okay. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where it is. I still felt that um, this era of magic was always very underappreciated. Um, but, oh my god, look at that art. Holy smokes, who did that? Clint? Oh my goodness, that's some creepy artwork, man. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know really how much growth and what the future potential is of this era. I personally think it's amazing, but that's just because I'm an old guy. And we got ourselves Marco Blade Master. Very, very beautiful looking vampire warrior there. And we got ourselves Checklist and a second rare in this pack. And a foil. Oh, beautiful. Look at that foil uncommon. Wow. Is this Rebecca? Therese? Who is this? Uh, Therese. Holy smoke. Shattered Perception. Look at that. That'd be a cool play, Matt. I have not seen that one before. I don't remember that. <clears throat> at least in foil. And we got a foil flip demon there. That looks pretty angry there. Holy smokes. So it's pretty cool that we can have uh, standard packs like this. And you can get double rares like that. You know? <clears throat> Just remember that. So friendly reminder for those of you who weren't around back in 2012. Um, Wizards cost for booster boxes this time was 73 a box, not 78. So it was cheaper before they did multiple price increases. Beautiful Wake Dancer. Love that artwork. Always oh, increasing vengeance for a beautiful rare spell. And we got ourselves up oh, another villager. So that's something to remember that the, the card, the boxes and packs back then were around 72 89 73 with the WPN. Everything it was a little bit cheaper, so you could get better prices. And, you know, these boxes were all day long for like 80 90 bucks for a long time. The market just really did not do much. What is that? What is she doing? That looks a little creepy. And we got the breath there, we got the heretic, and the chill of foreboding, and call of to the kindred. Again, not a lot of financial value in this set. This is a very flavor-heavy, lore-heavy product. Not really looking at a lot of financial value. We got old man Rudy over here. Okie dokie. And we got a foil scorching boy. Not much of a very chrome layer. The foiling it doesn't really pop as much. Come on, some good cards. We're going to make this happen, folks. Like I said, we're only doing one box opening today. Don't forget. We're not doing a, a lot of boxes here. Oh, that's always confuses me. All right, Grave Purge. As I said, I always see a lot of people are very controversial when they have very Halloween-y, dark-themed cemeteries and, you know, horrors and, you know, vampires and werewolves because it doesn't really flow at certain times of year, but I always thought it did. Warden of the Wall, Faith Shield, a Mystic Retrieval. Lost in the Woods for the enchantment. There were a lot of enchantments and spells in this product, if you haven't noticed. We got ourselves in the back here. Oh, my God, I forgot about the old... The Chosen of the Old Dr. Markov. Beautiful artwork. I always thought she was gorgeous. And then she turns into... Still beautiful, but you may want to be a little careful. Maybe you want to just stick with like a, like a Taco Bell type dinner. You may want to be a little careful there. Oh, not a foil. That's a regular. And so there's a lot of really, really cool artwork back in this era. Uh, but the financial value was always weak. So therefore, you know, this particular price of this particular product was always a lot lower Obviously, as of the filming of this video, um, Avacyn and um, original Innistrad are obviously quite expensive. Archangel's Light, another mythic, one of the weaker mythics in the set. Very iconic, though. I remember that was a very, very cool piece of art, though. But we have ourselves a foil, not foil, how do I keep saying, a double flip rare here. Very cool. This looks like a crazy chick with a red eye, I guess she has going on. She turns into crazy werewolf, so be careful with that. Maybe a little drive through action, no big deal. So, anyways, Dark Ascension will always be... Let's put it this way, folks. I, I, don't ex I don't think we ever see a sequel to this product. Let's put it that way. Deadly Allure. Goodness gracious. I knew that was Steve Argo. I was like, I bet you anything. That's the same artist that did Liliana on the Veil. Like, the outfit and the way the spandex type thing is. That's the same artist there. And going into the old Doomsday, really a duplicate rare already? That's a little disappointing. And Rudy's favorite, the Makov. Dr. Makov, the Chosen. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to see a sequel to this product. Unfortunately, I would like to. The closest we're ever going to get to these type of products is going to be like the, you know, Shadows over Innistrad, which was a sequel to Innistrad. Secrets of the Dead, very cool card. And the creepy, really, Runebinder again? Kind of weird we're getting duplicate. Hey, Chalice of Life! Our first one there that flips and turns into the Chalice of Death. Very cool flip card there. Big fan of that artifact. Very strange. We're getting a lot of duplicates. I was like, wow, that's that's surprisingly a, a quite large quantity of duplicates for only like a third of the way through the box. Be I love that real, real more 
detailed art though. Oh, Fateless Looting, very uh, very popular card there. In the old common slot, Lingering Souls again, Captain and Shattered Perception. Oh, gorgeous Requiem Angel, beautiful card and foil, everybody. Very very neat looking. And of course we got Old Man Rudy the Hermit. Just gets hairier. All right. So I still believe my personal opinion. You know, I kind of uh, kept a good position in this particular product because I always thought it was just. It was really unique. I thought it was just underappreciated, but, you know, never really... Definitely one of the lower performers. Uh, all right, Creepy Leech Chick. Really? Mythic number three. We're getting a lot of weird mythics today. All right, not really getting the mainstream ones. We're getting a lot of... You know, there's, we're not getting the heavy hitters, but... Kind of, kind of strange hits there. But then again, there's really not a lot. Not like there's any cards in the set worth like $40, $50. It's not like it's Avacyn or, of course, Innistrad. And Gravecrawler, finally the iconic rare, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very cool piece of history there. And the very creepy little villager check. Gravecrawler, man, that was... Like I said, there's, there's a very a lot of iconic pieces of history and magic in this set, but financially doesn't really uh, do much for you. you kind of, we really open and enjoy these products, just because, simply put, we love the lore, the beautiful artwork, the flavor. That's what we really like. Deranged Outcast. Very, very cool. I love that. Very beautiful art. And, of course, Grandma Rudy over here. You take your vitamins today, Rudy? All right, all right. Be nice, be nice. So, anywho, that's why we, uh, I don't really crack a lot of these, as you guys see, even when we do a box opening, we just kind of do one little box here. Curse of Thirst, very cool. Reminds me of the old Indiana Jones there. Curse of Exhaustion. You guys like the curses? I don't think the curses ever did a whole lot. Increasing Ambition. Neat card. Again, ah, casting costs a little much. I know it has flashback, but still. And another beautiful Mrs. Chosen turning into the uh, Mrs. Evil Chosen. Very cool. So, every time I do these videos, there's always armies of comments like, Why don't they do art like this anymore? Magic is dead. We want art. And this, it's just, look, it's just a different era, folks. It is what it is, man. Uh, and we got the Dr. Hell Rider over here with the spirit and the loyal Catholic. Oh, well, finally, another. I said, you guys knows how hard it is to get foils. Not very foily, as you can see. Very little foils. Or, I'm sorry, very little quantity of foils. And also, when you do get a foil, the foiling isn't very overpowering. The foiling is very, how do I say it? Very mild on the card. All right, we got the Geist. And, oh, Thalia, there's our heavy hitter, number one rare in the set, Mrs. Infamous Guardian. Very, very famous, beautiful Miss Ar Markov, and of course a foil, uh, just a foil, loyal common, and creepy zombie guy, foil common. You know, it's it's what's really cool about it though, is when you actually get a foil rare or a foil mythic, it's such a big deal, folks. That's why I said, like, when we hit, like, a Thalia, that's a big deal. There's no variance to it. There's no other. Like, when you hit these cards, it's it's an amazing moment. Dungeon Geist, eh. And Vampire, and just an Afflicted Deserter, and, of course, Crazy Vampire Dude. Yeah, I know. That's the thing is, you know, when we used to hit a Foil Rare or Mythic, if it was something major, it was a really big deal, everybody. And, unfortunately, now it just really... We got the Warlord looking pretty powerful there. We got the old Alpha, the Wolves. Ooh, the Wills, the Human Wizards. Love. I remember first saw this car. I loved her hair. Got it. I love beautiful hair like that. Such a such a thing for Creepy Rudy. I love the beauty like that. And we got the Will. I don't think this card was ever really. I don't think it ever really did a whole lot though. I don't think financially that card really ever got a lot of play or anything. The, the wheelchair. I don't. I don't think she did. It was a cool card and everything. I remember the artwork. That was all I remember. But I don't remember it ever really getting any real action. Geist, beautiful perception, and another grave crawler. Double tap in the grave crawler today. Okay, all right, that's a nice little. Uh, hey, if we're gonna get duplicates, give me some double grave crawlers and give me some double thalias. You know, hey, if we're gonna go that route, you know, let's at least get some good ones. Face shield again. We got the flare. I think it's the first time we've seen that on. Oh, in the cage, original printing cage. Uh, very, very iconic piece of uh, history from the old dark set here. Soul Uncommon and a Foil head Headless Rudy. The old Headless Scab. Very, very cool. Man, that is uh, still no Foil Rare. The Foil Rare remains at large, so uh, we may still hit something spicy, folks. Secrets of the Dead. Love it. Blood Feud and Zombie Apocalypse. Very iconic for the lore and theme of this product. And we got just the Hermit for the Common again. All right, folks, we're going to the last chunk of 12 packs here. 
Um, overall, Mr. Mulligan, uh, how do you feel about this? So far, we have not hit... I mean, we got Thalia and some grave crawlers, but we did not hit the heavy hitting... Uh, what are we looking for? What was that? Mikhail? Michael guy? What was that, um... I know the main mythic is still worth like 30, 40 bucks, maybe. Curse of Bloodletting. I know we're looking for... And we got the beautiful Miss Chosen in a land. I can't remember the name of it. Like, the... Uh, I remember that... At least it used to be. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong. It might be being mixed up with, uh, Avacyn or one of the other stats. Journey. Vengeful Vampire and the Bone Flinger in Increasing Savagery. It's a creepy little card, isn't it, everybody? And a Soul Seizure. Look at that. Uncommon. Look at that. Oh, my. <laughs> Dude, that Soul thing grabs that woman. Holy smokes. That is a creepy card, man. All right. Very cool. Like I said, about once, I think maybe, what, once a year we do one of these box openings. We very, very, uh, not very often, as you guys know. We don't do this very often. And Increasing Devotion. Beautiful angel-looking statue there. That's pretty cool. We got beautiful Miss Markov there. And, of course, we got a foil! Grandma Elder Rudy with... Whoa, those are some creepy eyes. Holy smokes. And turns into... Wow, the foiling looks really nice on that card, though. That's like the nicest foil we've actually seen in the opening here. That's so weird how some of the foiling doesn't really stand out in this product. It's not overpowering. It's kind of interesting. And we got Warden of the Wall, the Blood Feud again, and Fiend of the Shadows. Dude, the vampire, the way they did the vampire women in this thing, they are just aggressive, hardcore. What is that, like, cloak she's wearing? Look at that cloak, like the orange and purple. That's crazy, man. And another common loyal katha. Well, folks, we're down to the last little chunk of packs here. I'm hoping to see a, another spicy mythic and a foil rare still. Hopefully we don't miss a foil rare pack. Oh, Soren! <laughs> see, all I did was ask. Give us Mr. Soren, I forgot. We got Mr. Soren, the Planeswalker, and the Chalice of Life. I completely forgot Soren, Lord of Innistrad, is in this. That used to be a $20, $25 Planeswalker. Back before Planeswalkers were in a one in every pack. Am I right? Uh -uh. Curse of Echoes. Don't remember that one. Enchant Player. That's something we don't see very often. Do not remember that card. And another Hermit for a common card. Last couple packs today, folks. And then we're going to wrap up the day and relax into the sunset. And uh, definitely a, a little fun video here. Definitely a nice change of pace, everybody. I know a lot of people like to kind of go back and enjoy this stuff. So, and a Vault of the Archangel. Not a bad rare. This is uh, one of the very few specialty rare lands in the set. Um, obviously, uh, this product was not known for a very uh, expensive or any sort of land cycle or anything like that. So, to get a rare land in this particular product is actually kind of a big deal, everybody. All right, the Deadly Allure. Be careful with those crazy women. Heckling Fiends, Blood Feud, be careful with that. And the Creepy Devil Guy, be real careful with this dude. Flayer of the Hatebound. And we got the Scorn Villager for the common. Ah, three, four packs left, still waiting for that rare. Hello, where's our foil rare? Come on, baby, foil rare or mythic. I was like, we're getting right to the end, come on. Vengeful, Instincts, Survivor, and another Savagery, that was a duplicate rare. And a Chalice of Life, okay. I was like, come on, three packs left. Where is our foil rare or mythic? Come on, baby. How many mythics do we have? Well, we do have five mythics. I guess the mythics are kind of over with. And increasing devotion. Duplicate rare again. And really? Okay. Two packs left. The biggest moment now is we're looking for a foil rare or mythic in the close. Looking for something big, everybody. Altar of the Lost. Oh, ah, whoa, 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 whoa. I skipped the, okay. Hella Vault. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Big deal. Wow. And... Foil Rare, Curse of Echoes, right in the close. We did hit it, Curse of Echoes, Foil Rare. And we had an actual hell of a... You know, that was one of the cards I actually knew people speculated on. And was very surprised it never did anything. That was one of the cards I actually did think was going to do something. And a wow! Holy smokes, look at this, folks! In the close, the flipping creepy Reaver Spirit. Not really that great, but holy smokes! Look what we ended up with, ladies and gentlemen! We ended up with a 7 Mythic box, and with the foil rare. Wow. Oh, man, it still brings back memories. God, the hell vault. Oh, man. All right, Mr. Mulligan, thanks again for allowing all of us to enjoy this experience, everybody. Appreciate you being a very kind patron. All the cards you're seeing here are already on your way to uh, your little basement vault over there. Be safe, everybody. As always, a lot of beautiful things in the world. Make sure you pay attention.